Hey, brother. What's up, bro? Nothing much. How you feeling? How you feeling? Tired, man. Tired, but uh... <laughs> well, today's a bright and new day. Well, it's almost ended, but uh, I, I just had a grand old time sign waving this morning, saying mahalo to all the the uh, voters on the west side. Anyway, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Mel and Charlie Facebook Live on this Thursday, Thursday, Wednesday, November 4, November 4th, the day after the election. There are still a lot of uh, excitement in the air with the national races. It's still, it's still up in the air. But as far as the local races is concerned, um, we're going to be talking about that. Uh, we're also going to be talking about uh, we're also going to be talking about some of the uh, um, some of the pitfalls are again around COVID and maybe some things that you should know out there if you want to be safe and what you need to do uh, because there there seems to be some discrepancies and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about those discrepancies as well because our job is to inform and educate and hopefully you can walk away with. Uh, better knowledge of what's happening how you doing brother mel how was your day today busy it was a busy day i'm glad that you're going to inform and educate me because i'm confused so confused <laughs> <laughs> you know it's so amazing how you watch uh the news and and everybody has uh it's just amazing it's just amazing it's, let's just leave it at that it's just amazing how different people can get different perspectives from the same data Yes, the exact same data, exact same data and uh, different sides can can uh, come up with scenarios. It's just uh, but that's just how it is. That's how it is. But anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, man, it was a it was a short night last night, you know, from the time uh, we went to bed till the time we got up in the morning. So excuse me if I yawn because I'm tired. It was a busy day today at work. It was a busy day. Um, it was kind of nonstop and. Uh, so that's why tonight I'm back to the black cup, which is my coffee. Um, it's delicious. As you can see, I'm in my new uh, studio, which is in my bedroom because the AC is running. But let's, uh, do you guys hear how Kim and Roth agreed to drop second testing requirements for our big owl starting ASAP? No, I did not hear about that, but I'm not surprised. I think right now, um, we see the numbers climbing. We, we, we predicted this a while back. Um, this is just what's going to happen. We knew it was going to happen. But the last thing that the, last thing that the, the administration, the state administration wants right now is to even, uh, to create even more numbers. So I think the, test, the testing number is going to drop. Uh, any attempt, I mean, you know, you guys all know, you guys have been watching Facebook, you've been watching the news, you know that um, everything is coming back to the people, you know, the clusters, you know, they're going to blame Halloween, they're going to blame the voting, uh, Lieutenant Governor said, you know, expect more clusters, uh, more cases because of the voting, the lines, I mean, really, um, we know why the numbers are are, are going to spike. We know we, 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 it was predicted by every expert that came on our show. It was predicted by every expert that didn't come on our show. We know that once you allowed the visitors to come in without a second test, um, this is what would happen. And we are still in the beginning stages of the, the spikes based on what the experts are saying. We, we still, in the beginning stages. So from here on in, we should be seeing more. Now you add, of course, you add Thanksgiving, I mean, uh, Halloween, and you add uh, the, the election nights. And, well, you know, you can add these different gatherings that is uh, cultural here in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, you're going to get even more. But the fact of the matter is that it's, the state is very quick to go and, and just basically blame the local residents for the increase in numbers, rather than take a look at their own doing, what they did. Uh, look, Kauai, we just got another case today. Another one, uh, a, a returning resident. Uh, 
um, we, we just, it's not going to stop. And, and, and that, and yet I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of interested in what I just read about the big Island, um, Ross, and I'm assuming you're talking about the new mayor, Ross and Kim, <clears throat> I lost the comment now. Well, here, did you guys hear how, hear now Kim and Ross agreed to drop second testing requirement for our big owl starting ASAP? Yeah, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised. That, that kind of, that irritates me, but I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. We well, should be ramping know, up testing. You know, I, I think what, what should be done and, and the residents should be, should be very clear about this. I'm, I'm going to be very, very clear about this. If you're going to do that and you get spike in numbers, okay, and we saw today, uh, today's numbers is a, is a good indicator. They, they jumped up again, the big island. If that's going to happen, it, it would be best you not blame the residents right now, okay? Um, if, if it is a community spread, uh, I, I mean, we, we talked about this before, and that was, hey, give us information so we can be very, very responsible. You know, once it's in the community, I, I think, you know, you should alert everybody that the spread is in the community. We're in the community. We're not asking for names. We're not even asking for specific address, addresses. We're asking for locations in the approximate area, but we're not asking for house 8365 da 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 street apartment that that's not what we're saying at all but you should you know give it whether it's in a store and try be general but at the same time give enough information because i want to know if i was in a store at the same time you were in a store and there's a reported case i think i have a right to know i better start monitoring myself looking for symptoms i could have been back to back with the person who knows i tried to social distance but it's not that easy so that's, I think that's what we wanted to talk about tonight because you know, what you're saying, Mel, is there is a lot of things that's going on. Uh, and even with the testing itself, I wanted to talk about that. But for the, for the time being, by canceling a test, you go backwards in time. <laughs> you go backwards. You're not, you're not advancing. Okay? To stay ahead of this virus, you want to advance. You don't want to go backwards. Because now, and you know, I, I don't see anybody in here that's um, that we're being we're being simulcast live on, on on national radio or anything like that. So basically, what happens is, if we go back and you start having a spread, then guess what? The OS syndrome. I told you what that was before. It's it, it's it sounds something like, oh shit. That's right. You're gonna run into problems. You're gonna have that oh shit problem because now. Everybody gonna stop pointing fingers. And that's not a good thing to do because you're trying to get the community, you're trying to get the public to buy into what you're doing. And I've said that all along. When the messaging is bad, or when you make emergency rules that is designed to be broken and you know it's weak, you're only gonna cause people to say, you know what? I can screw with these guys because the thing is so lame. I'm going to break the rule. And it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense at all. And so those are the kind of things that I, I think we have to be very, very careful of. We have to be very careful. And you hit the nail on the head. Um, uh, no, you hit the nail on the head. I agree with you. Well, you know, we from day one. I mean, I think it was always the <clears throat> this. And that's what gets me is how, well, when we started this whole thing, when when COVID started, it, it was very clear uh, in in everyone's minds that the two components that was necessary is uh, testing, mass testing, and contact tracing. I mean, that that was from the beginning. That was two things that we needed to do. Uh, as far as the, admin, the the government was concerned. And of course, we all had our individual responsibilities, but as far as the government, testing and contact tracing. And then all of a sudden, uh, we started to see a lax, a real lax in the testing. We had a screwed up contact tracing program. 
Uh, and then we started to see the the, the damage, right? The, the impact, the, the, the positives start coming. And, uh, and then we, we didn't even get a handle on what was happening with the virus. We didn't, we didn't have a handle on COVID-19 in Hawaii. We never did. Uh, we had a little, you know, we had a little dip, but we, we saw that across the world, really that dip is just, it's just it could be a, whatever it's just an anomaly because right after that it, it goes right back up that's how this virus works and 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 we weren't even successful with containing the virus or isolating the virus and then it was automatically we're going to start focusing on opening up the economy and opening up tourism opening up the the, the airports again and that became the new priority so all of a sudden testing and contact tracing actually was in st stood in the way because the more we tested, the more numbers we got. It would be very hard to convince the people, the public, to that we're going to open up anything if our numbers were climbing. So we they figured every single excuse why we couldn't test. We did the surveillance testing. That freebie came from the feds. Okay, whatever. Uh, I shouldn't say free, but the the one that they did, that was kind of like the pacifier. Yeah, that was a pacifier for everybody. Like, oh, okay, make them feel good. But we knew that wasn't going to solve the problem because we. It was just who, anybody, right? Anybody, but not, not people that thought they may have been in contact uh, with, with COVID people. It was anybody could go get a test. And, but we, we kept pushing forward. You no, know, we had the deadline, eh? October 15th, October 15th, October 15th, we, whatever it took, October 15th. And then you had Mayor Caldwell who said, hey, you know, we want to go to level uh, tier one, tier two, tier, we want to open up, want to open up. I wonder what his comments were today. I didn't hear him today. Uh, you know, he kept begging his, his island, please, you know, we're so close to tier three. We want to get to tier three. But I think that just went out the window today with hundred something cases. Uh, what, what did he think? Did he think his speeches every day going to scare away the virus? His rah-rah every day was going to make the virus go somewhere else? <laughs> no, it ain't, man. This virus is here to stay. And, and um I never hear him. Did you hear his press conference today? Usually he's out. Bingo. I get notified whenever he comes on. I listen just because I think it's entertaining. Well, I, I was. Come on, um, people. Come on. If we can, if we can just keep those numbers down, they just, <laughs> just keep those numbers down and we can be in tier three. I don't want to go back to tier one. <laughs> Bam! Right in the butt. Guess what? You hit it backwards, bro. And that's sad. It's sad because, you know, you give the people this false hope that, we, that we, we're doing it right. And, and the people know better. You know, I'll never, I can't remember who the one said, who, who told us, Charlie, a while back said, you know, this short-lived uh, success will be followed by a long-lived disaster. And uh, I tell you something, man, all of that stuff is coming true right now. All of that is coming true right now. Well, let, 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 us, let us look at this, you know, for our viewers out there. Just think about it this way. We learn by experience. We see by experience. We become victim beyond one's control because we have to allow, well, you don't have to, but it's, it, you, you got no, really, you got no choice. You know, government is leading the way it leads. I can only imagine if we came out of some type of attack, like a wartime situation. See how they handle this pandemic. <laughs> It's like, oh, we're going to try to negotiate with them. I said, brother, when you get planning missiles coming in with you, I don't care how much you like negotiate. <laughs> Just make sure you don't open your mouth too wide with one go right down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, 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 I'm not going to say that I'm, I, I'm aggravated because I think I'm beyond angry. I'm really for safety. I, I mean, you know, Having been in the security field more than ever since 1996, after I got out of the police department, okay? So that's 24 years now. Safety has always been paramount. I mean, just the mere fact that you, uh, watching landscapers put in uh, sprinklers for a new ground cover, right? If it's too close to, if it's too close to the walkway, I got to make sure that the sprinkler heads are facing away from the walkway because at night when most times sprinklers go on, you don't want to wet the whole place because there are people that walk at night and they can slip and fall. You have, you have these problems. I don't know if our state or our counties or our elected officials 
think about safety. I mean, they, they do a lot of lip service. I see that. I try to understand because there's always, when you say something, there's always got to be a motive. So my motive is, if I'm saying it to you now, is because I want you to be safe. That's my motive. But when they're talking about, oh, we want to go to the next tier, I said, okay, then maybe you should ask yourself, today would be a good time to start. What? Ask yourself, what the hell happened with this spike that we had today? Okay. And maybe the city needs to talk with the state and say, hey, did we trace where these spikes came from? Or are we just looking at where they're popping up at? Because if you're just looking at where they're popping up, any damn fool can find out, right? When there's a positive case, just by giving them a damn test. I want to know prior to taking a test, where the hell the damn thing came from? Mm -hmm. And if you can't mm -hmm. answer that, then you're, you're basically pissing in the wind. I'm sorry. You are spending money with no results over the horizon. I'm sorry. That's all you're doing. And you might be doing to pacify this. Oh, we're taking a pro, we're taking a reactive measure. Oh, we're gonna stop this thing. No, you're basically pissing in the wind. Now, and, I and that would be and, and and that would be pissing in headwind. Yep. Yep. Just checking. They call, they call it the shower. The shower. <laughs> <laughs> So Leilani, Leilani just said, reported on BigIslandNow.com. Change might start this weekend. Hawaii County will instead test 20% of all incoming travelers. Here's waiting. He's waiting for the attorneys to clear the change. Bet they're not even doing this. Well, listen. Kauai, returning residents, 20% opts to take a test, a second test. 2% of visitors up to take a second test. So good luck, Big Island. Good luck. We're trying to get 20%. I don't know how you go mandate 20%. Uh, that's kind of unfair. You, you know, you cannot mandate some and not all. You can ask. But anyway, good luck, Harry Kim. And and uh, what's the new guy's name? Um, what's his name? Mitch, Mitch Roth. Mitch, Mitch Roth. Roth, prosecutor, lawyer. Yep. Great. Go get him. 20%. <laughs> Yeehaw! I mean, you know, Charlie, I, this is the thing, Charlie. This is the thing. <clears throat> eight months now. Been eight months, right? You, you think, you would think that with all the hundred six figure salaries, I should say, just all the six figure salaries, some of them make 200,000, whatever. All of those six figure salaried state employees, and they cannot figure this out. Even though, they get cheat sheets from all over the country, you know, advice from all over the country. No, saying, hey, I'm yeah, guys, I'm, you, I'm gonna tell you how this, this works. They get all the information, like you say, from all over the country, right? Mm -hmm. They go home, they leave them on their desk. Everybody forget that a nighttime custodian, no touch my paperwork. <laughs> they come back the next day, all gone. <laughs> I, I, you know, you, you might be right. You might be right, but I just, for the life of me, don't get it. It's, we have a problem, right? We have a problem. We have people that solve problems. You know, you, if, if you get erosion, you put up on guardrail along the highway, right? You put up on guardrails so the cars don't go off the cliff. Uh, you know, we, there, you get one pothole or one, one broken water pipe, you put, you put the tape around and you tell everybody, hey, broken water pipe, dangerous. You know, I, we got coronavirus and we know that this coronavirus is very contagious and that it, it can jump on you as long as you come in contact with somebody that's positive. <laughs> we and we just, we just open the doors, man, and say, hey, but God, hey, you guys stay home. You, you wear your mask, you social distance, you all of that. But hey, tourists, hey, come on, man, come, come enjoy. Because we are the safest place. Um, I don't understand. I mean, I, I know why. I know why they're doing it. It's very clear. But yet, you know, at some point, you would think that uh, somebody, and we've had, we've had a few whistleblowers stand up and said, you know what, 
I've had it. I'm not going to play this game. These guys are going to kill people. You know, you had the contact tracer. You had uh, Lana. You had uh, different people that stood up. Not everyone became famous. We have a lot of them that, you know, uh, stood up to do the right thing. You had people that left because they're not comfortable but these guys not getting it and and they continue to uh to do things that's gonna and then they know what the outcome will be and charlie that's just i don't that i just don't get it man what w- w- <laughs> i try you know I, I i always give people the benefit of the doubt always do and so i always do but charlie let, let's let's do an exercise let's do an exercise charlie you and i impromptu okay. let's just let's just try okay. to justify to justify what they're doing let's try seriously i'm not it's not a joke we you let's try to have a discussion where we totally agree with no need tests and and i want you to try to justify seriously okay the reason and, and and not not no one joke I, i'm dead dead serious like let's try to you know let's try to flip it and say okay let's try it. you you're green i mean uh, you're eager i'm green and, and let's just have our morning discussion of oh, why well, why i gotta be eager i don't like be eager uh, okay uh, you'll be you'll be green i'll be eager <laughs> i don't like be green either yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know as hard as i try as hard as I try, I cannot, I cannot. Like, wait, Char- Charlie, um, I'm so glad that, yeah, let's say you, we don't need to call you Lieutenant Governor Green, but you're, you're, you're the guy in charge of this reopening. Hey, Charlie, I'm really glad you, your plan, your plan is working. I'm really happy. You know, look, the, you know, not very many cases. And um, I think the fact that we took away the testing requirement, you know, it, it really saved us some money. And it did inconvenience the tourists, so we'll get more tourists coming. Yes. And you know, I know I know a lot of the people complaining about uh, about this, a lot of the constituents. But you know, in reality, it, it, look at the caseload compared to the mainland. It's not that much. It's not that much. So yeah. thanks, thanks for coming up with this brilliant, brilliant plan. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. you no, know, I um, when I was elected into office, <coughs> I always told you I'd be transparent. And I'm going to be transparent. The reason why I did this is um, I sat I, I sat around a group of table on a table with a group of friends um, from the hotel industry, from the airlines, um, mainly mainly from the tourist tourism industry. And I told them, you know, how 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 can all of you benefit? Because I know that if I put testing, I'm going to restrict a lot of the um, well, you know, you can look at everyone as a, a walking dollar sign, right? I'm going to I'm going to restrict your walking dollar sign. So therefore, let's try this. <coughs> let me let me say this. Let's try in the beginning. Let's let's bring some people in. And let's do some testing but on it and scatter it. See how much see how much people we actually get. Then we can make then we, then from there we can make a decision because <coughs> it would probably be safe to say that if we catch five or six for five thousand, it'll be very easy to say that well, for every five to six thousand, we'll catch five. I'm confident of that. I mean, because who's to say I'm wrong? I'm gonna tell you the reason why. And I'm I'm addressing all of you sitting on the table. Nobody can say I'm wrong. Because why? Because you won't be able to find those individuals to make my side of the story wrong. Plain and simple. Now, if one of those, that group comes in and a whole bunch of them get sick and they go to the hospital, then yes, then I'm going to going to look bad, but I don't think that's going to happen. And up until that point, nobody, nobody will be able to say that I'm wrong because they will not have any proof to, to show that I'm wrong. 
So yes, I'm terminating the test. I'm going to terminate the test. That's a really good idea because I mean, I'll keep our numbers down. You know, yeah. it'll keep our numbers down and we can treat the sick ones that, you know, the testing wouldn't catch anyway. But the, when they get sick, we we'll just treat them in our hospitals. You know, we only had, you know, 50% capacity. We get plenty, plenty more beds. And, right. Uh, so, you know, you know, I, I see, I get nauseous when I talk like that. You know, I get my stomach flip upside down. I get, I get the Portuguese say bush, you know, because, because that's, I don't know what else can discussions they would have, to be honest. I mean, other than, um, you know, the, the risk is worth the reward. I don't know what the reward is because, you know, when you talk to, I, I, I haven't, but I saw the interviews that they're doing with some of the business people down in downtown and, um, and, and they have not seen the influx of visitor business, tourist business that they saw pre COVID. And that's not going to happen for a while. And again, the, the, it's very short sighted, very short sighted because, or short lived because I, you know, if we, if we continue on this trend, uh, and I'm just talking about the opening of the state on October 15th. We, we're just starting to see the impacts now. We'll see the impacts of Halloween three weeks from now. And if there is any impact from the voters in the congregate, you know, the, the, the groups, uh, which I thought was shallow to, to mention, but it, he said it. But if, in fact, anything comes out of that, you're looking at three weeks after that. So we, we, we're still in the early phases of the opening on October 15th. That's what we're seeing now. We're not even going to see Halloween until mm, no end of November, beginning of December. And, um, and the travel will be increasing because of the, you know, the snowbirds are coming in. Um, and we know that that's going to happen. So we're just going to add more and you, you compounding the problem every single day that goes by because you have these gatherings. But the fact yeah. remains that this virus, we're exposing or we, we're, we're bringing in more virus. It's like seeds, yeah? It's like seeds. It's like weeds in your yard. You pull all the weeds and at some point you have some control of the weeds in your yard. But then these birds fly over and they take a crap, right? You, you, you get those in Waimea and you get these damn birds. They, they take a crap in the air and splat on your grass. Well, in the bird doodoo, get seeds that they eat and those seeds start growing. Now I cannot contact trace one weed, but I can guarantee you, I never plant that weed and it more than likely came out of the rectum of a bird. Now, if that weed was uh, deadly, then I would be forced to enclose my backyard with a covering to prevent that deadly weed from growing and killing people that I love that live in my house. I would not open up and put bird feeders in my yard so more birds come, so more birds can take a crap and more seeds can grow in my yard putting more weeds. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best analogy I can think of right now. I don't even know where that came from. It just popped in my head. That was, that, that, that was that was that was brilliant. I mean, I mean, I I, I was following you all of them too. You know, um, you brought up the point about in Waimea. I mean, the only way you gonna know the bird gonna crap is when you look up and you wonder why from light came dark. It's because the damn thing went fall in your eye. But this is the way I look at things. Okay, there's got to be a reason why in Australia, a lot of the beaches in Australia. You ever seen those? tour guides, they show the commercials. You ever wondered why they got those nets that go out in the swimming area with those floaters on them? You know why the nets are out there? Probably to prevent a disaster like sharks. Yeah, that's the reason why. Now, they could, you know, you get some people that might be thinking, and I use that analogy because just imagine if you came all the way to Australia, 
to go swim in a beach that I um, that's been promoted in all the different Condé Nast magazine, uh, Traveler, right? And you're telling people, come to our beaches, they're safe. And just on that particular day, Joe Schmo from Kokomo, who's in charge of cleaning the beach, is like, you know what? I'm gonna clean the net too. So he pulls the net onto shore without telling anybody. What do you think will happen now? Is that so? Yep. Is that so? Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> you talk about this in, in a sense that, you know, what do we do? First of all, I know there's some people on, on, on our show right now. I can I saw their names passing through. They're very good at stats. They're very good at stats. And you might disagree with me, and I hope you do. I could never understand why. If you're saying that we test 10% or, or we test, we'll, we'll catch so many per, per thousand, right? And you use that model that speaks for the rest of the total package, right? In, in totality. I don't know how you can say that because it's all dependent on one, where your flight is coming in from, if it's coming in from a hot spot or not, right? Two, mm -hmm. whether the flight was full or not. Three, if you're flying in people on such great deals, does it matter that you pack them in like sardines? Those are all variables that gotta be considered. So I don't know how you say, say well, we brought in a thousand and we got just one. So therefore you're saying that for uh, 10,000, we're only gonna have 10. How do you know that? I'm a firm believer and, and please to our statisticians out there that's watching this, how the hell can you say that if you don't test everybody, how can you say you're getting a true picture? Cause you're not. I don't care what you say, because I'll tell you this, I work DUI as a officer assigned to the DUI team. Over a period of time, you won't catch certain people in certain area because they're creatures of habit, right? Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, they're gonna say, well, you know, tonight, we're probably gonna catch five guys because the bars look busy, so we're gonna catch them. They're gonna come down. Okay, but what if you stop five guys and none of them is DUI just because they came out of the bar? The thing is, you don't know inside the bar if he was drinking or not. You can't even detect the odor of alcohol. So that means that, hey, you did something wrong, and that is you never really see one driving pattern to have the probable cause to pull them over in the first place, right? But there's mm -hmm. some people that do that. But that's why I'm saying about this testing. If you know we have a pandemic, why are we taking just a small percentage and let that small percentage talk for everything else? I could never understand that. And if there's somebody out there that can tell me, well, Charlie, you know, blah, 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 then, you know, please tell me. Good point. I mean, that's, again, you know, you can, and the statisticians would know this, you know, you, they, you can, you can, you can make the numbers fit any any uh, desired outcome. You can. I mean, you just you know, you just alter and change and uh, use the use the fields, the numbers that you that can help, and you toss the ones that that hurt your theory. I mean, I just that's how it works. It's sad. I wanted to address uh, Kik Kikel. Uh, he talked about in order to limit the further spread of coronavirus, the U.S. has reached agreements with both Canada and Mexico to limit all non-essential travel across the borders. Working closely and collaboratively, the Department of Homeland Security is part of a North American approach to stop the spread of the virus. So basically, no snowbird travelers are coming. I think you remember this, Charlie. I blew my first gasket, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, when I found out that because we kept telling us we cannot stop travel, we cannot stop travel, you cannot stop airplanes, but they were successful in stopping any airline traffic from Canada and Mexico into the United States and vice versa, the southern and the northern bar, uh, border of the continental United States. 
that did not include Hawaii. So Canadians and Mexicans can come to Hawaii. They just cannot come through, uh, they, they cannot fly into the United States, uh, the, the continental United States. So WestJet flies from Alaska to, uh, I mean, uh, Canada to Hawaii um, and many others. So no, the snowbirds are here. I can promise you that uh, they are here and they're, and they're coming. And whether they're from Canada or where they're from the East Coast, where it's Michigan or Minnesota, they're here. And um, that it's it's and it and it's now is the season where it starts. So I just wanted to to clarify that uh, because it's it that 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 whole thing between Canada and Mexico was only specifically for the continental United States, which I thought was extremely unfair for us here in Hawaii. Because well, we don't have a border. We don't have a border. It's international. The, the waters are international waters. Well, the, the, the reason why, too, that's, I, I can remember when I first graduated from high school, having one of my first, second jobs at the, the old Hawaiian Region Hotel, which is a Marriott, Marriott Waikiki now. But back in the day, they had uh, the point after. We had the third floor restaurant. We had the summary downstairs. And it, it was like the people that wasn't given information, the traveler that came here, they were pretty naive. Because sometimes you make friends with them, you know, you, you try to be the ambassador of Aloha. Right? And they actually ask you questions like, oh, do you, do you live in a grass hut? <laughs> That's what happens. But not enough information goes out there. And because we're way out in the middle of the ocean, just imagine people flying on the plane. You like on window seat. Why? Because you like to see Hawaii. Well, the plane just left California. It'll be about another six hours before you see anything. And even if you could see Hawaii from thousands of miles away, unless you got a really damn good eyesight, it's just like a little, I mean, if the Coast Guard a hard time finding people in the water, right? When on boat sink. What makes you think you're gonna be able to see one island far, far away? <laughs> right? Mm hmm Mayor Caldwell said tonight, if the numbers stay the same as today or increase, we are heading for a third lockdown. This is from our friend Edwin. He said it's up to us to prevent this. There we go. There we go. Up to us. Yeah, it's like it's our damn fault. We, the residents, have no control if COVID-19 is being introduced into our state. Bingo, Edwin. Bingo. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, you're right, Edwin. It's up to the leaders to stop the lockdown. Not, not, no. <laughs> no, you know, you know, what, not uh, you, know, a, you, you, you know, they say that. Anything that we do, you don't want to embarrass anyone, right? That's what, that's what mm -hmm. they do. So just like testing, you don't want to embarrass anyone. But they have no problem setting that volume real loud on that magnavana when you go through TSA, when you walk in and the bug goes, bah, 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 bah. because they're looking at you like, oh, Taliban just came through. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they have no problem. And when and you will notice sometimes the alarm loud. Oh just boy! The crack of everybody, they go over there. They even turn them up louder. You know. So we have a question here. Why would and this is for Virginia Le Lahapa. Uh, why would individuals who get tested out of state, whom does not have results in hand, be able to travel? Why would they? Why would they be counted elsewhere if they will be in need of our medical resources? Yeah, you know, it goes back to what the, the Fed said. We cannot, you cannot force anyone to take a test. You cannot stop anyone from traveling. If they're positive, that's another story. But if they took a test within 72 hours, which is our brilliant state's idea, uh, and you're waiting for your results, which is uh, kind of what happened in today's case, if you read the, the, the press release, yeah, I put it, I posted it up today. You find out that you're positive when you arrive. Um, you get whooshed off to quarantine and, and uh, 
but you're counted in the state that you came from because that's where you contracted the virus. Yes, that person now becomes a burden to the state and uh, resources if, if they get sick. And that is the problem, right? That, that is why this 72-hour pretest crap is rubbish. It's useless. More than enough people told us that it's useless. You better off doing what Cuomo is doing now, doing what Derek had proposed, what now, must be a couple of months ago. You test them when they come in and you put them in quarantine until they take the test. That way there is absolutely no chance, no chance of that happening, right? Where you, you test here, you quarantine, you get a negative test after six days, the chances of you being, uh, if you test negative, chances of you being positive is very slim. You're gonna limit that, that virus. So yeah, that's why we can't do it. We cannot, you cannot, this is the country we live in, the wonderful country we live in. You cannot prohibit anyone from flying to where they wanna go. Well, what about when they touch the ground? Yeah, well, that's, that's where we can. And that is where I believe the governor is making a terrible mistake by rejecting our mayor's request to test. You can mandate quarantine. That, that is not in question. I mean, that, that is done, you know, it's being done now in, in New York. It was done here for how long? So yeah, you can require quarantine. Um, and that's why Derek wanted to add that testing component, right? You just, you can get out of quarantine early. That's the incentive if you take a second test. So the second test in conjunction, the first test without a second test is useless. It's just useless. The first test in conjunction with a, with a mandatory second test, I think is the ticket. That's the ticket. That's the way to go. Well, and you know, that was what was rejected. Well, gang, I, I think, you know, for simplistic sake, simplicity, you know, we, we talk about the pre-testing, the post-testing. The bottom line is we see what's, what's catching it. The pre-testing is not catching anything. It's not catching anything at all. It's after you arrive. If it was me, I do away with the pre test Okay? Because show me one person who in pre test positive and got on a plane. We don't know that. We don't know that. But we sure know about somebody coming and post testing. And see, the, on, the only caveat to this whole thing is you can say, well, you know what? They took a pre test and they were negative. But we caught them on the post test. Okay, we've done that six times already, right? Pre-test negative, post-test. What the hell are we doing about it? You know, why, why you know, I mean, I, I feel so bad for our mayor. He's trying to be so proactive in his thing, but he keeps on getting his wings clipped for one reason or another. I mean, he's doing a lot. He is absolutely doing a lot. Now you get one new mayor coming in. Hey, that's, I guess that's part of politics. You get elected, you're going to flex right off the bat, you know? So you're going to do that. Okay. So let me ask you this. Uh, is, is there any um, restitution? You take away the test, say people on the Big Island get sick. Can the, can the people file claims against the, the Big Island? Uh, administration because you took away that safety net like you talked about earlier you have that 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 you have that safety net there for a reason because once you take it away you basically you know it's like your fortification right for your fort you know if you take down the walls what what is there to defend your defend the people in, in that fort zero unless they're really good marksmen and they can shoot far distance so you know, I, I'm I'm looking at it from the standpoint that hey, you, you take you take away that you take away that safety, that safety net there. You're basically telling everybody, man, you're on your own. And that's one of the things that I wanted our viewers to understand tonight. We always talk about taking safety protocols, safety measures, 
Yeah. You know what, what gets even more difficult, Mel, and I've heard you say this before, but I'm going to add one step on top of it. We're allowing these people in, and this is when I say people, traveler, both residents and non-residents. But every time we have an outbreak, we don't know if the DOH is taking an active role in attacking that outbreak surgically going after that cluster wherever it's at just going after it and beating it to a pulp until we know we got it contained right mm -hmm. i would say until you can get that kind of crap under control no act big and play like you all that and let some more stuff in because then we're gonna come right to that same problem and the question was asked and you asked it and i asked it what's the threshold before contact tracing no longer works. Is it 100 cases, 200 cases, 50 cases? What is it? We were never given an answer because they don't want us to know the answer. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I think Kauai is the only island right now that releases a press release as soon as they find out uh, that a new case you know, everybody else waits and they wait to the state to report it the next day. Um, you know, our county comes out whenever they get notified that we have a new positive. Boom, they put together a press release. You know, they do their, their due diligence, their investigation. They release the press release. So we get that information later <clears throat> after the state's report. Now, it might be confusing to some, but I tell you what, I'll take that any day. We have not heard a thing about any post-testing numbers out of Honolulu, Maui, or the Big Island. Um, you get, and I cannot imagine that any of the, the other islands would be any different than what we're seeing here on Kauai. That's just, I cannot imagine it would be much different. Uh, but we don't hear that. You know, Derek is not ashamed and afraid to tell the world that we have people coming in that tested negative that are now testing positive on our island. And I respect and appreciate him for that. I don't see that coming from the outer islands. You cannot tell me that that hasn't happened in any of the other the other islands. So in it, now we go back to the big island where you had this thing going. We came up, remember the nine positives went to four, went to zero. All of a sudden, one in 700 went to one in a, a billion, you know, all of a sudden. Uh, now you get the new mayor. The new mayor is bizarre. I'm, I'm shocked that he would even come out this early. He's not even a mayor yet and uh, come out and and say, you know, I guess he's working on, on a relationship with the state administration, you know, basically sucking up. Um, I'll use that term. I won't use the true term, but sucking up. Uh, because you, you know, I just had this discussion. They we were talking about politics. And I said, you know, people, new, new people that they get elected, they make promises to potential supporters during a campaign. I'm not speaking specifically. I'm saying generally. So I, I know on Kauai, get some new council members and I'm saying, you know, you cannot commit to everybody to get their vote. You gotta be true and honest because there's gonna come a point where the two sides that you made promises to are gonna become, uh, gonna intersect. And one party gonna tell you, hey bro, you told me you was gonna do this. And the other one said, brother, you told me you was gonna do this. And then, then you screwed up. And I'm not sure what would cause the, the Big Island mayor or the mayor elect, uh, Roth, David Lee Roth, is that what his name, David? What is his name? Mitch, 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 Mitch Roth. Roth, to come out the day after the election and, and come out with a, with a statement like that, that, you know, that uh, the second test is a waste of money. The second test is a waste of money. Wow, really? So I feel sorry for you guys on a big island. Um, if that's the kind of uh, direction your state, your county is gonna go in, I, I worry for you all. Um, because that's not that's not rational thinking. And where where when you're talking about life, when you're talking about health and safety, since when does money become a, a, a talking point? Since when does money become a negotiating item when you're dealing with some people that are dying and a virus that can kill? When when does money all of us you know find another excuse, brother? I know you're a lawyer. I know you're the prosecutor, but. Find out a better reason than it's a waste of money. You started to sound like green. That is no good because every wasted test that you don't give 
could save a life and many it others. Even wasted nights. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, really. That test that you didn't give because you wanted to save 20 bucks um, may have, may be the one, the super spreader that creates a cluster of 40 people, which then creates another cluster of 120 people. So money, i sorry, Mitch, i sorry. Um, that's a shitty excuse. The second test costs too much money and it's a waste of money. We can use it for other things. Like what? More ventilators? Anyway, you, sorry, you sorry, sorry, Charles, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I told you, we yin and yang. You the mad one, me, I'm the laughable one. Because I'm, oh, like you know, like you know, get mad, huh? like you know, get mad. I don't, Come on, I, don't get to, mad. I can, <laughs> I can push the button right now, and 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 we would, your screen would go black because you would punch the the screen. <laughs> I don't get mad. No, it, it. What what I find, what I find sad, is we're discussing this about them cutting back on the test. And yet, just a few months ago, we lost all those veterans at the nursing home. Because why? Because of this virus. And I don't, I, I, I'm not laughing about that. I'm just thinking how quickly some people forget. So here you have an ongoing death, like so many a day happening every single day, right? Why? You know, Harry Kim was one of the first ones to get rid of the management and promoted the test, 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 test. What was happening at that nursing home was basically one screenshot of what can happen coming in to the islands from abroad. But nobody looks at it that way because they look at it as those who are in a nursing home, they're old and frail. Those coming in from the outside, they're young and energetic. BS, come on. The people that passed away in a nursing home, they didn't ask for it. So you had no choice but to put the test in. That was the right thing to do and it's the only thing you could do. Put the test in there so you can stop the darn thing. Right? That's that's what happened. Uh, you, you, have, you know, you, you have to stop it. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think about how <laughs> this leadership can do the right thing. Yeah, they can do the right thing and and have the support of the entire state, all their constituents. I mean, it just in. Me. If, you know, I mean, just I mean, and today would be a good day to to start doing a, a speech, having your speech writer start writing a speech saying, you know, in light of the recent events, we may have uh, acted too soon. We we may have uh, opened up prematurely. And while we understand that you all were screaming and yelling, biting, swearing, Mel and Charlie was, you know, you was calling us names. We honestly believe through our medical uh, advisory committee or whatever that, that, uh, that it was safe. But now as we look and we project going forward, uh, it appears that we may have acted too soon. And for that, we apologize. And we are working on a, uh, on a plan to discontinue and to uh, prevent any future spread of this virus. And we, we, we hope we can, you know, to the businesses of the, of the island or the state, you know, while we tried, we tried, uh, we just cannot put uh, our, the health and safety of our residents at risk any further. And uh, based on what we've seen, you know, at this time, we're going to have to start pulling back the rate. You know, I, I mean, th that's what I would do, man. I mean, because I tell you what, when you get a hundred and some odd cases, people are mad, but they're not ferocious. If you're going to wait till we get to three, four, five hundred cases and 20, 30, 40 deaths, then people are going to be ferocious. And going to be like Mayor uh, Caldwell when he was out doing his press conference and the passing car, you heard a F you! <laughs> he never said F, he said the word. 
but now is the time, right? Now you cannot tell me that they, they don't see this. I mean, what what would what else would be causing this jump in the numbers right now? What you know, one thing that I, I want the the people that are watching here and, and kind of get an insight and what do, and still doesn't make sense. We 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 have this climb in numbers, okay? And I don't want it, you know, nobody said it, it was associated with gatherings, okay? Didn't officially come out. Nobody said that it was due to um, funerals. Nobody said that it was due to holidays. None of that. What they do say is that it's a community spread. So here we go again. The question remains, <coughs> there has not one day gone by when we hit a zero. <coughs> okay. Now one day has gone by that we've, that Honolulu has had a zero. Not one day. We've always had cases. So my question is, is anybody paying attention to that? Because there, it seems to me, a lot of people on that island were getting relaxed. And I'm saying from the Department of Health standpoint, because they were looking at the numbers, the number like 46, oh, that's manageable. Oh, 36, oh, that's manageable. All of a sudden, you take a drastic jump. So what's even more alarming, why don't they tell us these positive cases that was revealed today? What was the test batch? How much were tested to gain that amount? Give us that information. Let us look. What is the positivity rate? You know? Why don't, why don't you start doing that? Because why? We've been down this path eight months now. I'm going to say this, and I was one of them. I was a dumbbell when it first started. I just got impacted because my brother died from it. But you know that from then to now, not only Charlie Iona, but every single person watching tonight that's on the feed, you folks all became educated about COVID. And that's what this administration is afraid of. They thought that everybody was just going to be stupid and ride off into the sunset. But you folks care enough to join us every single night. You folks care enough to share information like our friend Brian Ingalls, okay? You folks care every night to know what's the trend. We talk about Nani. Yeah, she angry at times, but you know what? The girl is smart because she worked in the medical field. Talk about my, my two Hanai daughters, Lana. She got sick. She was able to express herself and tell us the story like George Ma and Sarah Bolles, okay? Then you hear my other Hanai daughter there, Melissa Bolton, just lost her brother-in-law, a great singer, a couple of days ago to COVID. But see, you folks have been on this show with us. You have been on this so-called magical ride and you've been able to tune in on what's really happening. So basically we all started dumb now we all smart and numbers don't lie. So have you noticed recently, they're starting to hide numbers from us. The deep Department of Health used to always give the numbers. Now it takes out act of Congress to get the numbers. Why is that? And you know, I don't wanna be a conspiracy theorist because I, I had my fair share with that going on with the, the national, the national election, you get all kinds of conspiracy theory going on, but we are actually in Hawaii. We are actually living, living this out. Because we know that at one point when we were being given numbers, we all could exchange information right online with each other. And everybody knew what the positivity rate was. It gave everybody an inside aid. This is what we gotta do. We gotta start buckling down. Now you don't have that. Or you're being told, hey, buckle down or we're gonna have to shut down again. That, that, that's the only option to get. 
So what are you going to shut down about? And even that, I question. When you shut down, are you shutting down for the right reasons or for the wrong reason? You know, just because we get one spike, doesn't mean that all businesses got to shut down. Why? Because you think all businesses is responsible for, for spreading the virus? No. That's why contact traces is so important. You need to find out where the damn thing came from. So I think that's what everybody needs to understand. How we look at these things. Because everybody is smart. Man. Everybody is real smart. And like I said, the other thing I was going to talk about, right? How many false positive and false negative cases we've been getting recently? Does that mean that the test they're using is, it's been touted as, oh, very high and accurate. It's an accurate test. So accurate test, the thing giving out false positive readings, is that accurate? <laughs> I mean, you know, even, even if you suffer from cancer, you have a right to go on second medical opinion. When it comes down to taking one test, you know one choice. The only two choices is one costs $90 and the other is 150. That's the only choices you get, right? And what's even more sad, you know, they said, well, you know, if you want your test right away, it's $150. But if you wait 36 hours, it's only $90. Yet you go look at the test, it's the same damn test. <laughs> It's the same damn test. And one will, and the thing about it is they make it seem like it's gonna go into this top secret lab. They can they can put they can put maybe shishi water inside, she come up and go give you one result. <laughs> and come to find out, all they're gonna do is put them under something and look at your boogers and see if your boogers moving around. If they move around, yeah, get virus on there. And you know, I just I just tell myself, man, what is this world coming to? What is this world coming to? Leona Martin, Melissa Bolton's mom is on. Yeah. It, I think it's her first time. So welcome, welcome. Yeah. Welcome to the jungle. You know, you talk about the test, Charlie. I cannot help but think about, <laughs> again, <laughs> when you look at your accuracy, right? <laughs> when they were selling this, pre-travel testing to the people of Hawaii when they said, don't worry, the testing is per accurate, 99.9%, 99.9%, 99.5%, .9%, whatever the hell it was. <laughs> and then we, and then I go back to the big island, right? Nine positives, nine, <laughs> only to find out that at the end of the day, None. They canceled all of them. They, all, they said all of them <laughs> in reality was that. So you know what is the accuracy rate of that damn test? Zero. <laughs> Zero. I would fire that idiots that sell that test. I would take them off your trusted partner's list. <laughs> whatever no you're using. But you told the people not to worry because we, we get accurate tests. Big Island. Harry Kim, no worry, this test accurate. We're going to test everybody. Even though none of the tests are accurate, but we're going to test everybody. Rather than just get a test that is conclusive, like the PCR, you know. Uh, you, you, know how, you know how the test should work? <laughs> I was telling you. This is the Mel and Charlie testing lab on the Big Island. <laughs> we get nine samples. We put the solution inside. Check them up. Oh shit, I am positive. <laughs> Josh, we get nine positive. What'd you like us to do? Okay, 10 four. Now, go put a little bit more in there and try water them down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Josh. The thing, I, I think when water them down so much, the virus is gone already. <laughs> Only get four left. You like us water down, down to Okay, now, Josh said, water the last four. So you yeah. start hey. and you get zero. <laughs> you know, I feel sorry for the guy. Um, so hang on it real quick. I'm trying to find this. Uh, they, they what they do is they take them to a lab and the and the the they the, you know the guy that was you, Charlie. 
Yeah. You also brought you brought your dog, the poor dog. <laughs> right down the nose, the dog get him. Right down the nose. Ten seconds, yeah. pop. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Ten seconds. Just ten seconds. Go easy. Okay, Josh. I, I think I got him, Josh. I think I got him. It's negative for some reason. It's negative. <laughs> you know what happened? Was, you, no. You put him in your dog's nose. The deal is going up. Now, we have good news and we have bad news. <laughs> okay. What's the bad news? You tested positive. What's the good news? Did you know you was a German Shepherd? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, somebody, <laughs> somebody sent me a, damn, I cannot find them right now, but I will, I will. But anyway, somebody sent me a screenshot of that thing that these visitors get, or they will get, it says you have been selected to participate in our surveillance testing program. Oh, yeah. So, Tomorrow, just take this phone or whatever, on whatever day, take this phone to a testing facility and let them know, okay, Charlie, you go on, you go on tour scheduled with your wife and your family on vacation, and you're going you're gonna to say, oh, got to cancel the tour because I got to go take one test? We went through this before. It's crazy. It's insane. No. Um, I don't know what happened to him. I cannot find him. But anyway, I'll send him to listen. You. The, I had them. I don't know where. It's here someplace, but I get so much messages. Man, you guys bombard me with messages, and I'm not complaining. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, it's, it's um, the saga continues. You know, the saga continues. You know, every day I wake, I pray. I can tell you, guys, every night I go, I put, before I put my head on that pillow, I pray. And I ask for God's blessings on all our decision makers all of our patients of COVID, the families and every, everybody that's struggling and suffering every night. And every morning I wake up and I hope and I, and I, and I, I turn on the news that something would be different. And it never is. Uh, in fact, every day I find out that there is more chipping away of our safety nets. Whatever little we have left, we keep chipping and chipping away. And then, you know, you get a day like today where you get over 100 new cases. And then you get, you know, Kauai, we got another positive. We had one yesterday. And it's, it's just keep growing. And it's all travel related. You know, it's people coming here, whether it's a visitor or a returning resident. Well, it's just, it's, it's, it's happening and it's growing. And, and yet there is no movement that I can see. In fact, you know, what I just hear about now on a big island, that again, it's not, you, you're taking away, you, you're, you're decreasing the effectiveness of, of, of what little programs we have. And that is a huge frustration. So, you know, we're going to continue to sound the har a horn. We're going to continue to make the noise. And uh, at some point, I mean, at some point, they're going to have to listen. At some point, they're going to have to listen to uh, the voices of reason, which isn't just Mel and Charlie. It's all of you and the guests that we bring on. At some point, they're going to have to. Um, but they, you know, I, I was hoping by now they would have kind of understood, but they, they haven't. And they continue on this journey. And they, you know, what's really interesting is they, they're actually very proud of themselves. They're so excited that we're looking at Japan now. Okay, Charlie, let me ask you this question. Yes. Um, what would you say if I told you that Japan said, or we told Japan that you can bring all your passage, all your residents to Hawaii. They take a test three days before and they can come to our country without any quarantine. And then I would tell you that the Japanese president or prime minister says, that is fine, but your people come or my people come back home will quarantine regardless of whether they took a test or not. What does that tell you? What I mean, what does that tell you? That, really? That, like that, that tells me that um, there seems to be a problem in the in, uh, um, in the there's a language barrier. That's what it <laughs> that's what it tells me. Because I would think it's it's well first of all 
it would raise a, a red flag in my mind because they know something that we don't if they're keeping their quarantine in place. They right. know something that we they know something that we know, but we just ignore. No, we we you know I I want us yeah yeah you're right you're right. I mean we we Charlie I mean my God we we all know right everybody by now like you said we started off this road dumb, and we became I won't say we we doctors but I think we well well familiar with with what the experts are saying, mm -hmm. but it reminds me of when you remember uh, you know when I was young Charlie I was little Kolohe I was a little rascal so you remember when you had i don't know if this happened to you because i don't know i for some reason i think you was a rascal too but remember did you have a situation where you had a friend in school and and your friend would come over to your house and play and you guys would do whatever we do and then their parents would never let you go to their house like your friend would say oh but you know we cannot go our house no my parents my parents don't like Anybody come over the house? Well, I know it's not true because I know that my other friends went to your house. So the only the real answer is, you know, your parents don't like me there because they think I'm going to steal or whatever. That's kind of Japan is saying, yeah, take our take our virus. But when they come back, they're they going to get they're going to get 14 days quarantine. Any of you guys that come to Japan, 14 day quarantine. See, because well, they're I, smart. They're smart. Used, they are I used, smart. I used to have friends like that. I would always invite them to my house, but they wouldn't invite me to their house. But it wasn't for that reason. It's just that when I go to the house, I just not like leave. <laughs> <laughs> I occupy one bedroom, you know. I take advantage of the maid service. I have my friends mother cook for me. And that's why. And then, you know, because they come to my house, we play, have fun. They have overnight sleepovers, right? Not me. I, I even changed my last name for match up with the house. And, and and the family, like I'm one of the kids. <laughs> oh gosh, gosh, gosh! Well, it's almost that time, Charlie. We spoke about the mayor's race on the yep. Big Island. Um, just wanted to real touch on real quick, uh, Kawhi. You know, uh, we get three new council members. Well, kind of three. You get Bernard, who's never been on the council, but he's been in elected office for a long time. We've been with the county for. We had two. We had, yeah. uh, we had uh, two two council members new. Right. Um, yeah. Just you just get keep uh, keep okay. Hello. Yeah. Uh, William, Billy William, DeCosta. William, William DeCosta and I think. Yeah. And Bernard Kavoy. Yeah. And then, oh uh, yeah, two. Honolulu. That's right. Yeah. Honolulu got a, a new prosecutor, Steve Ong. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. As well as a new mayor, uh, Rick Blangiardi. Uh, we are very, very excited about uh, Congressional District. First one to be elected that represents the second Congressional District, not from Honolulu, lives in the second Congressional District. Okay, and that's Kaiali Ka Kahele. Kai Kahele. He'll be going to Washington and he'll be joining uh, Ed Case. And you know, uh, just just a little trivia. The first Hawaiian Kanaka Maole was Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalani Anaole that went to Congress, represent Hawaii. And then after him was uh, Dan Akaka. And now Kai of Hawaiian ancestry is the third. But not only will he represent the Hawaiian uh, Hawaiian people, but he will represent all people because, you know, unbelievable. The guy's served in the military, has done many flights to Afghanistan. Uh, in fact, he did the airlift for the National Guard when they switched out. He did the airlift. He brought the C-130 in. It was just a momentous moment just to see that and see him coming off, giving the shock a sign, the tail of the plane opened up, all the National Guard um, personnel that served on Kauai during the initial stages of the pandemic. He flew them all back to their respective homes, whether it be the Big Island of Hawaii or um, Oahu. It was really nice. Uh, 
We also had, you know, the, the, some of the friends of ours that we've made over the over the last eight months that came on our show. Uh, Augie T got elected last night. Uh, Val Okimoto got reelected last night. Senator Kurt Favela got reelected last night. Um, Lindy Coit. Lindy Coit, Representative Lindy Coit, who, uh, yeah, she had a tough race in the primary. Uh, won last night. Oh, she's. So uh, we, Unreal. Which goes to show you, if you like win in political office, you got to come on our show. Yeah. You got to come on our show. We should have charged them, Charlie. We should have charged them some advertising fund money. Yeah, I mean, you know. Who else? I don't like leave nobody out. I don't like leave nobody out. Um, all of the incumbents on Kauai got reelected. The House members, all three districts, everybody got reelected. I'm just trying to think of the people that came on our show. I Donovan, think we did Donovan, Donovan got elected. He oh, got Donovan, elected. yep. I was uh, Senator Donovan De La Cruz. Also, um, like uh, Kalani English. Kalani English. Did, did he have a race? Did he have a race? Yeah, he did. Okay. Senator English. Uh, also, I'd like to send a special shout out. Uh, you remember uh, a very loving individual? He was first uh, Honolulu City Council, and then he went over to uh, the Senate uh, Breen. Horiboto? Oh, yeah. Him. Okay. So he was replaced uh, with uh, uh, Bennett Mizolucha. So she mm -hmm. was a temporary inductee to that position. And she ran and she successfully won. So congratulations to her. Uh, it's, it was pretty, it's pretty exciting. And the turnout, you know, I'm just telling you folks that uh, just the turnout. I was so happy with the turnout. It was the most uh, ever that Hawaii, Hawaii has had. And you know, voting is your right. Don't lose it. Use it. Don't let it go by you. Okay? Because the last thing you like to do is grumble, 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 and you had a chance to make a difference. Make sure you use it. In next election, you're going to see our names on the ballot, Charlie and Mel. We're going to be, uh, we're actually running for governor, lieutenant governor. Yeah, yeah. We're running for mayor of Honolulu, Big Island. We're going to be the first duo to take control over the whole state. Oh. <laughs> oh. Never been done before, but with your help, we can do it. Viva La Portugal. Mm. It's never been done before. And it probably never will. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, um, no, uh, I, I, forgot, <laughs> I forgot to mention this. To all of you that came on the night of the election last night, we took a break and we we're deciding whether we're going to come on again because things are so backlogged. But we came on. I want to just thank you for those of you that stayed all the way to midnight with us last night. <laughs> because that short period of time, I, I didn't even know we had like 12, 1,200 people on uh, through other shares was watching that. I just thought, eh, maybe we're going to have 100 or so. But I think it was about 11, 1,200. The first segment we had about... Uh, 1,400 and you know and thanks to you we were able to you know we were able to share and uh, you know and and to and to the candidates who didn't make it you folks gave it a, a, a an, an effort that you know you have nothing to be ashamed of and the, the people had a hard time especially for the county council races here on Kauai I know the people I, I had a hard time deciding because everybody was good but it's, it's sad that you can only pick seven. You can only pick seven. So I want to say congratulations to all the participants. You know, last night we had Wally Nishimura, we had Jane Batad, uh, Wally Batad, we had Addison Bolasan, we had Mason Chalk, who became number one in the race. We had Bernard Cavallo. You know, just, uh, we had uh, Mike Dandaran. Just thank you so much. And Arrow, Arrow Kanashiro. Thank you. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, we were in good shape because we, we the pool of candidates were good all the way around. So, uh, you know, we, 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 there was no way we could have lost last night. And it's just unfortunate, like you say, 
you know, I've been on the losing end um, of an election. My first time I ran, I lost, and uh, I lost by 200 votes. And it sucks, man. It hurts. I rather get blown out. You know, you just like you rather just get licking than lose by 200 because then you you start thinking, ooh, I you know I should have gone walk one more neighborhood. Or I should have did one more coffee hour, and and then you start doing all this, all the blah. It's over. Move on. You know, get up and go. But um, these guys that they worked hard because it was a different type of campaign. You know, they didn't have the opportunity to go out and meet people uh, the traditional way. So, you know, people think it's easier this way, but, you know, it's hard. It's difficult to get people on a Zoom call or on a, on a you know, wireless or whatever you want, a virtual meeting. Everybody's busy. It's so much easier to make food. See, when you get food, they all come. Unfortunately, even the ones that don't vote for you come. But for the most part, you know, everybody coming out and you, to meet you, uh and, and and virtually you cannot you know you cannot you know you, you cannot feed them so it's difficult it's hard work and i respect every single one of them and i and i just hope that they don't i've already seen uh addison and wally both came out already and declared their candidacy for the next election that to me says a lot when you come out right there and you say hey you know what i'm i'm coming back i'm trying again in 2022 uh i think you know that that's uh that's the way to go that's the way to go and um yeah it's tough politics tough game tough game but it builds character and thick skin mm -hmm. so anyway i think oh glenn wakai damn glenn wakai also had a race last night somebody just mentioned his name on the on the post so yeah i'm sure we missed somebody we've had so many damn people on here um the no no josh green never have an election no um no i think that's about it yep 2022 yep the next one well i'd like to say all right I'd like to Charlie. say thank you again thank you so much thank you for um joining us every night hope we were able to share some things you know and again it's um it's disappointing we we, we had a guest lined up but you know to prior commitments and and, and we totally understand because, you know, uh, number one, we don't get paid for doing this. And certainly the guests that do come on, uh, you know, we they, they come on because of the love of wanting to come on. And so we just have to work around their time schedule. And it was just, uh, there, there was a conflict in schedule scheduling. But hopefully we, we can get that person on. Um, you know, without you folks, there would be no Mel and Charlie. So, you, you know, our, our, our whole premise that we do this is to inform and educate, but it's also just to talk story. And, you know, sometimes we wish you can be, our way of talking story to you is just watching your comments. And I just like to say, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mel? Yeah, we enjoy, we enjoy uh, doing this <clears throat> and we enjoy uh, you guys jumping on and, and uh, we just appreciate you guys all so much. You know, it's, um, it, we, we we worked up until the election. It's elections over now. Well, most of it, we still get the big one, the president's one, but that'll that'll be resolved hopefully soon. Uh, now we we you know we're going to try and focus back on uh, we're going to pay attention to what's going on with COVID, but we're also going to start transitioning off into other interesting topics as well, because uh, I think you know we there's we've <clears throat> as, as we get new developments we'll bring it up, but we also want to kind of transition off as well and and find interesting topics for all of you. So. Yep. uh just hang with us we appreciate you guys so much we really do and um we hope you guys will join us again tomorrow night we'll, we got to regroup now i mean it was kind of this last week was uh just kind of kind of busy so yep. we'll regroup and um we'll be back tomorrow night at seven o'clock love you guys god bless stay safe aloha <laughs>